If you play 3v3 arena, chances are you've come across the composition of RMP, given that it's literally the most played comp in this bracket. And for good reason too. As we can see, the comp has topped the ladder in both the European and North American region. So that got us thinking, how do you guys fare when you're up against this goliath of a comp? In order to find out, we spent countless hours analyzing gameplay from our subscribers, and to no one's surprise, Rogue Mage Priest is the comp that people tend to struggle against the most. What's more is that it's often the melee players that let their teams down the most, with constant overlaps of defensive cooldowns and awkward positioning decisions, which ultimately lead to RMPs getting easy wins. So no matter if you're a healer, caster, or melee, today's video will outline the biggest mistakes that melee players are making when facing RMP, so you and your teammates can start to learn how how to rectify those errors. But before we get started, it's time for the question of the day. What do you think is the best 3v3 comp in the game? I personally think that Shatter, aka Shadow Priest, Fire Mage, Holy Paladin has proven to be the best comp in Shadowlands so far. While it has a handful of tricky matchups, its offensive and defensive capabilities are unmatched by most comps. Anyway, let us know what you think is the most OP 3v3 comp in the comments below. And of course, we want to make sure you all know about Skillcat. It's the number one place to improve at World of Warcraft, with hundreds of incredible guides created with the very best players in the world. The best part? You don't even have to take our word for it. If you don't climb at least 250 rating while actively using Skillcapped, you can claim a full refund. Check us out right after this. And without further delay, let's get right into it. To kick things off, in the first part of this video, we'll be breaking down gameplay from three 1800 players, an Arms Warrior, a Ret Paladin, and a Frost Death Knight before going into some high rated gameplay to illustrate how pro players avoid the mistakes we're about to show you. Now, each of these melee obviously have very different tools for dealing with an RMP, but despite that fact, the way you must fundamentally play against an RMP remains the same, no matter your class. To that end, we'll be focusing on positioning, defensive cooldown rotation, and crowd control usage. Three Three concepts that apply to every melee, no matter their class. Jumping into this game of our 1800 warrior, we see his TSG trading blows with the enemy RMP without too much happening. The RMP fails their first setup and lets the TSG generate a ton of pressure. Eventually though, we start to see some cracks in our warrior's gameplay as he completely wastes a fear outside of a setup from the enemy RMP. The decision to constantly waste crowd control like this is what will eventually be this warrior's downfall, as using crowd control outside of setups from an RMP is how you open the door for them to find kill windows that you cannot prevent. This lines up perfectly with one of those three concepts we mentioned before getting into this game. Just as a reminder, we're paying attention to positioning, defensives, and CC. And as the last few seconds displayed CC being waste, the next few seconds showcase how poor positioning can allow an RMP to easily set up, as our warrior allows the enemy mage to push on top of his healer, uncontested, and land a full polymorph. This results in the RMP getting a clean go with combustion, which forces the warrior to trinket and die by the sword. Now, although we just saw two of our three concepts being failed, we at least saw the warrior correctly respond to this offensive setup with his own set of defensives. But simply trading defensives correctly isn't enough, as a well-played RMP can set up cross CC multiple times a minute, which makes outplaying them with your crowd control vital for preventing some of these setups and giving your team enough time to get cooldowns back in order to survive the next setup. Again, we see our warrior make another vital mistake with his crowd control as he opts to use Stormbolt on the priest while the rogue is sitting in stealth and waiting to set up a kill. Not only does this Stormbolt not accomplish much offensively, but the end result is that the RMP gets the pump damage into our warrior's Resto Shaman. Now, there's no denying the Resto Shaman on our warrior's team could have done a much better job at keeping himself alive by simply line of sighting the mage and the mind games from the priest. But here at Skillcapped, we choose not to play the blame game, but instead focus on what we could have done better. That is, after all, the recipe to success. Moving on, let's take a look at Aret Paladin, again playing at around 1800. One more time, we're looking to see correct use of positioning, defensive cooldowns, and crowd control for our Aret to lead his team to victory. Right off the bat though, we see the first mistake occurring with positioning, as our Aret runs straight into the open and allows the RMP to get a perfect opener on him with cross CC on his entire team. Now, take a second to think about what our Aret can do to make up for this mistake with his positioning. Should he trinket, use shield of vengeance, and try to outheal the damage? Perhaps he should wait to see if the mage uses Combust and then trade Divine Shield. Well, either decision would probably work out, so let's see what happens. The Rhett trinkets and uses his stun on the rogue, which is probably the worst global he could have used given the Hammer of Justice is a magical debuff that the enemy healer can dispel. 
This means that in just the first 10 seconds of this game, our Rhett has both failed with his positioning and failed with usage of crowd control. To make matters worse, the decision to waste a global on stunning the rogue instead of instantly using Shield of Vengeance results in our Rhett also using Divine Shield. This means that his poor positioning and decision making with crowd control and defensive cooldown usage resulted in the Rhett failing all three of our key concepts right at the start of this game. Positioning, he ran straight into the open. Defensive cooldowns, he overlapped Trinket, Shield of Vengeance, and Divine Shield. Crowd control, he wasted his stun on the rogue that got dispelled. And sadly, we also see the Rhett's teammates not doing him any favors, as the rest of Shaman trinkets the blind while already on Polymorph DR, which means there was no follow-up CC available. And the warrior also trinketed to help save our Rhett when he used Divine Shield. At this point, the game is essentially lost, as the Rhett Warrior Shaman has exhausted all of their PvP trinkets in addition to Divine Shield, which simply cannot be allowed to happen. Several things could have been done to avoid this, which we'll get to later, but we unfortunately continue to see mistakes occur with the Warrior on our Rhett's team wasting his fear outside of a setup, which makes it just that much easier for this RMP to eventually set up a clean go. We also see our Rhett running back into a defensive position, despite using all of his defensives to survive. The RMP clearly has no momentum right now, so why pull back? After an RMP sets up, you have a small window in which you can be the aggressors, and so you should be looking to push in immediately after surviving, and so coming back like this loses you out on those precious seconds you have in between an RMP setups. Anyway, despite an attempt to then push in and get some pressure going, the lack of an available stun because it was wasted in the opener prevents any trinkets from being forced from the enemy team before they're able to set up a second time and force blessing and protection from our ret. Still though, we do eventually see cross CC happen, and a trinket is forced by the second hammer of justice of the game, but we're still just waiting for our ret to go down here due to the lack of trinkets on his team and lack of urgency in their offensive setups. If we had seen better use of the ret's stun in the opener, it's entirely possible that the rogue would have trinketed by now. And guess what? Because the rogue still has his trinket available, he breaks out of the disarm to stun the ret and win the game. Now, it's no secret that our Rhett Warrior Shaman team should have just been trying to turtle behind a pillar until they get cooldowns back, but our focus is on preventing you from even getting into such a dire situation in the first place. Alright, the last of our 1800 games is going to be a Frost DK playing TSG. Again, we see the RMP getting the opener with a sap on the healer and a stun on the kill target, but this time we actually see a huge mistake from the RMP, which is the lack of cross CC on the second DPS, which in this case is our Death Knight. Whenever an RMP makes this mistake, it's up to the player that's not CC'd to shut down the setup with their own abilities. In this case, we simply want to see the DK death grip the mage on top of the rogue and use blinding sleep. Instead though, what we see is our DK trade out his anti-magic zone before the enemy mage uses combustion. And although this does help his warrior survive, this is not the correct trade as it opens up a window where the mage can use combustion while anti-magic zone is on cooldown. Definitely a big mistake from our death knight. In addition, the warrior on our death knight's team also needlessly trades out his die by the sword, making it even easier for the RMP to set up their kill. So in this opener, we've already seen our death knight and his warrior teammate fail with their crowd control and defensive cooldowns as they didn't shut down the opener in the correct way and needlessly overlapped defensives before the RMP pulled the trigger on their major offenses. We do at least then see our DK make a good play of stopping the follow-up polymorph on his healer after the blind is used by rotating through his blinding sleet, stun, grip, and interrupt. Sadly though, we eventually see the repercussions of the warrior and DK's decision to trade both anti-magic zone and die by the sword before the RMP committed offensive cooldowns, which is the divine shield and blessing of sacrifice from the holy paladin. Now, this did only happen because the Holy Paladin made the mistake of dropping combat and being sapped. However, despite that mistake, these two melee could have easily carried the game and survived on their own here by not wasting those major defensives in the opener and giving the RMP this really strong window to set up in while Anti-Magic Zone and Die by the Sword were still on cooldown. And now, as we let the game play out, we see it culminating in a rapid loss for the TSG, all because of those huge errors with their defensive cooldowns in the opener. Of course, a handful of minor mistakes here and there also lead to this death. For example, the DK not saving grip and mind freeze to stop important polymorphs, but ultimately, this loss is all because the melee failed to respond correctly to the RMP's opener. 
Alright guys, hopefully by now you're starting to see the patterns in these low rated games and exactly why these losses to RMP are happening so frequently. Through a combination of bad defensive cooldown usage, missing opportunities to shut down setups with crowd control and poor positioning, low rated melee allow RMPs to run away with the game. It's now time for us to look at some pros so we can illustrate exactly how you should be playing against RMP as a melee in order to prevent these openers from snowballing the game away from you, causing quick losses. First, we've got a game from North America's number one ret paladin, Vanguard. Here, he's also playing Ret Warrior Shaman against what's actually a harder version of RMP as they've got a Holy Priest. Right off the bat, we see the biggest difference in that Vanguards is sitting back with his team and isn't making the mistake of trying to rush in and get opened in the middle of the map. This allows his warrior to react to the CC on their Resto Shaman by using Bladestorm which gets the rogue out and lets him land a fear on both the rogue and mage, completely shutting down this opener. As the game moves past the opener, we see another major difference in how our pro Ret Warrior Shaman plays in that they're being the aggressors straight after the RMP's opener by pushing in on top of the Rogue and Priest. This choice to position on top of the enemy team after the opener allows them to generate a ton of pressure and eventually gets a trinket from the enemy Priest. Straight after this cooldown is forced and Vanguard's team enters another window in which the RMP can freely set up a kill with cross CC, we see Vanguard's immediately move back towards his healer. What's so perfect about his decision making with his positioning here is that it allows his shaman to trinket out of the polymorph and use spirit link totem to keep Vanguard's alive through the combustion, vendetta, and mind games of the RMP. So, unlike our 1800 Ret who traded his own trinket, Shield of Vengeance, and Divine Shield to survive the RMP's first big offensive setup, Vanguard's optimal positioning allows his Shaman to keep him alive without the need for Vanguard's to trade either his trinket or Divine Shield. Vanguard's continues to repeat this picture-perfect play of not overlapping defensive cooldowns throughout the game, and eventually when RMP secures a clean 3 vs 1 setup on Vanguard's, he simply trades his Divine Shield to survive, with that being the only defensive use during this setup. By simply being consistent with his clean defensive play and rotating properly, Vanguard's and his team are able to stay alive long enough to run the enemy priest out of mana and secure the victory. Before we leave you, we've got one last game, this time where we're looking at North America's number one death knight, Mez. We once again begin with a few similarities between the Vanguard's clip and this one, as Mez remains by his team in the opener near a pillar, waiting for the RMP to push in and try a setup. As Mez remains by his team in the opener near a pillar, waiting for the RMP to push in and try to set up. Again, we see a sap in the opener in conjunction with Cross CC on the rest of Mez's team, which his healer decides to counter with a trinket and blessing of sacrifice, primarily because of the enemy mage's decision to use combustion in the opener. Now, as the sap ends on Mez, if you recall the 1800 DK game we showed you earlier, we mentioned that the DK can use death grip and blinding sleet in the opener to shut down the RMP's first setup. And as the RMP swaps onto the Holy Paladin because he's trinketed, Mez takes this opportunity to do exactly that making perfect use of his crowd control thanks to his decision to position well in the opener. This forces the mage to trinket, which Mez reacts to by using his abomination limb to grip him back and stun both the rogue and the mage. Skipping forward in this game, notice that Mez still hasn't used his anti-magic zone, as he'll be making sure to only trade it for combustion 99% of the time. We then see the RMP cross CC Mez and use combustion on his healer, which Mez ensures to counter with his own trinket in anti-magic zone, effectively countering this huge offensive cooldown all by himself. So once more, with correct positioning, effective use of crowd control, and most importantly optimal defensive cooldown trading, Mez and his team run the RMP out of cooldowns and secure a kill on the mage. Anyway guys, that's about it for today's guide. Hopefully you learned exactly how you should be playing against RMP as a melee and you'll be able to apply it to both your own gameplay and your teammates. Thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time.